Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. I've got such a fun team to show to you in today's video. And uh, sort of the inspiration for creating this team uh, was obviously based around my shard pull. Yesterday, I got Calvalax, one of uh, people's most wanted legendaries. People think he's amazing. Now, I'm gonna show you his build here, guys. I'm gonna show you his build. And all I can say, like, obviously I pulled him less than 24 hours ago, okay? Don't worry, I, I'm a content creator. I get a ton of content creator perks and stuff. So if you are not able to make a build this insane uh, in 24 hours, don't worry. You know, most people wouldn't be able to make a build like this. Let's just, let's just find him. Scroll down here. So the uh, legendary spirit of... No, he's not there. Uh, he's a bit further down. Again, don't worry if you can't quite recreate this build. Here he is. Okay. So Calvlax, we've got him... He's, he's actually kind of, he's pimping here. <laughs> he's, he's pretty insane. Uh, so we've got him, we have him in a, uh, we've got him in a destroy weapon here, which is nice. We've got plus four accuracy glyph right there. We have him in cruel gauntlets. We've actually glyphed that with plus five accuracy. It's pretty good. Accuracy chest piece in the regeneration set. Then we do have some attack percentage boots, uh, level 12 as well, actually, from the avenging set. Once again, glyphed with that plus four accuracy so up to actually three star ascension uh you know it's that those potion keeps aren't open every day but we were able to scrape through uh and actually very important if we look at his overall stats we have him up at 230 accuracy uh we do have him as well at 99 speed and that actually does matter We've got some pre almost leet uh health here as well uh, but it's uh, it's pretty good, right? It's pretty good. And this is also, by the way, let's dive into Ice Golem. Let me show you this team. This is also, you can consider this to be an update um, on my Dark Kale build as well. I've completely rebuilt Dark Kale. We've got Gerda Bogbrew, level 43. She is in here as well. That's right, Gerda Bogbrew making an end. Actually, you know what? Let me show you. Let me quickly show you here the Gerda Bogbrew build, because I know you guys are going to be jealous of this one too. She actually does have six pieces of gear on, which is pretty nice. We do need her to have some speed. She needs to be faster than Dark Kale. So she's up at 218 speed. She has 223 accuracy. Uh, and she is, of course, unbooked. Uh, she is unbooked. Actually, so is uh, so is uh, Calvalax. I forgot to mention that. He doesn't have any books. Uh, he does need three-star ascension for this. But here we go. Calvalax in the lead, giving us that speed aura. And let's go. So this is stage 25 of Ice Golem. So let's see how it works. So we go in. Calvalax poisons everyone on turn one. We get more poisons from Elinaril. Then Gerda Bogbrew puts in some poisons. Dark Kale extends all the poisons. And then we blow them up. Uh, you could use other champions... I know that Taurus is a really good one, or a second Calvalax. If you had someone that could put out four poisons, you'd be pretty good. Then you could have Elinar actually running slower and just blow up the poisons. She wouldn't need to land any herself, and that would be perfect. Unfortunately, um, I don't have that. I don't even have a Taurus. Never pulled him. So we're actually using Gerda here. Fun thing about Gerda, her passive does turn meter depletion whenever an enemy receives a debuff, which actually gives us a ton of safety. Believe it or not, when we get to the start of this boss, she does a ton of turn meter depletion, which lets us just get ahead of all these enemies. And now you can see why this is so good, why it's so fast. Um, because Dark Kale is extending all those debuffs over and over again, we rip through that Ice Golem, 51 seconds, stage 25. 51 seconds. And hopefully here you can see why... Uh, we've got the builds that we do on these champions, Gerda and Calvalax. They're using their passives, they're giving us poisons, and then they're dying off, and that's very important. Kale extends our poisons on the waves, Elinaro blows them up. Kaimar resets for wave two, so we do the same thing. Then we get to the boss, and uh, yeah, basically the rest of them just die. They get some poisons up before they die. Dark Kale can keep extending those poisons, blowing up the poisons with his A1, all the rest. And there we go. It's as simple as that. And the really nice thing that makes this consistent is that Dark Kale's passive... Let's actually show you the Dark Kale build. Um, the, Dar uh, the Dark Kale passive actually makes this affinity friendly. Normally, this would fail, whatever, like 15% of the time because you'd be crit, right? Dark Kale's magic affinity, the Ice Golem's magic affinity, 15% of the time he would crit you and... and the run would probably fail. However, Dark Kale uh, with his passive actually decreases the crit rate by 15%. So he gives them 0% chance to crit. So he can never be crit. And that's what makes this consistent. Now, for my Dark Kale build, I am slightly, unfortunately, lacking on gear. So that does make this run not 100%. I think it's about 95%. 
This runs about 95% because I'm slightly low on gear for Dark Kale. So I've completely rebuilt him. This is what he's looking like. So the key things to aim for, you need over 2,500 defense. You need over 50,000 HP and preferably more. You'd preferably be up closer to, you know, 3k defense, uh, 60k HP. This is, it gets tough. His base stats are really bad here. So that's where it's hard. For speed, I have him at 210. I think preferably somewhere around 220. And it's really some sort of combination of those stats to make it safe. 100% uh, crit rate, you do need that. He needs to crit to extend, so he needs 100% crit rate. Um, and then for resistance, you should really be 300 plus. I'm a bit low in resistance and you need 220 accuracy. I'm slightly too high. So there's some min-maxing here with the stats to make this absolutely 100%. For me, he, he does get debuffed sometimes. He usually wins anyway, but there's sometimes some weird combinations of stuff can happen very rarely and he can die. But like I said, it's, it's very, very rare. Um, when I was running some test runs yesterday, he did fail once or twice. Um, when I ran the test runs today, he hasn't died yet. So yeah, it's it's you know it's kind of weird. And this is his build actually. So his masteries, no offense tree at all. It's very important not to write that war master or that giant slayer. They are going to trigger the retaliation hit from the golem and really slow down your run because the ads will respawn. He'll start attacking them. We're going to go down the defense tree, picking up more resistance and just making us more survivable. That's going to be important to just push further on. More resistance there. We do need that resistance. We've got spirit haste, speed for dead allies. And then we're extending his debuffs as well. More accuracy stuff there. Uh, and that's how that works. Now, here's the fun thing. Ice Golem 25, about a 50 to, you know, 50 second to one minute run, depending on your RNG. Pretty damn slick. And let me throw this out there as well. Since the Hydra nerf, especially, this is a big reason why I want to do this team. Ice Golem, in my opinion, is now one of the better dungeons. Why? Because Reflex and Taunting set, these are now two really, really good sets. They've jumped up in value massively with Hydra. Reflex on your damage dealers like Geomancer, absolutely insane. Uh, taunting, giving you a provoke to lock down Head of Decay on champions that otherwise wouldn't have it. Pretty damn insane, pretty damn good. Um, and yeah, like life offense and defense are junk. Crit rate's okay, resistance actually quite good for Arena. It's actually a decent dungeon now. Like it's decent, like for me personally, in Dragon Slayer, I want Lifesteal, maybe a little bit of Toxic, and, and, you know, Stalwart's okay, but it's better than the Dragon Gear for me, which is kind of nuts now. Ice Golem, because there's just, there's no real way to supplement Reflex. Relentless is similar, but it has some distinct differences. Uh, but there you go. In terms of Dragon, though, let's check this out. So, almost exact same team, almost exact same, but we're swapping the lead. Let's dive in and let me show you why. There's a very specific reason we don't want that speed aura, uh, but we go through the ways. It's going to be the same thing. We lay out the poisons, we extend them, and then we blow them up. And uh, yeah, we actually, it, it's, this is 100% consistent. I did try the run a few times with LNR actually running after them and blowing it up, and it wasn't 100% consistent. If there were resists, uh, Gerda's not booked, so Gerda's not 100%, so it didn't quite work. Now, here's why the speed stuff I've mentioned is the, look at the turn meter on Calvalax and the boss, boom. Watch it again. Watch Calvalax, turn meter, and the boss. And this is why Calvalax is not in the lead. Um, boom. Look at that. This is why Calvalax is not in the lead. And this is why we have him with 99 speed. So the fun thing about this is that the Dragon Boss has 100 speed. Calvalax has 99 speed. So if we give him literally no extra speed, he gets outsped by one, which means that it just cuts out an animation, which is just perfect. And he just dies. So he comes in, he does his passive. He never gets a turn on the boss. It is physically impossible for him to take a turn on the boss. And it just speeds up our time. And there we go. 54 seconds on Dragon's Lair 25 with Gerda Bog, with unbooked Gerda Bog Brew. <laughs> there we go. That's what we like to see. The team, I believe, does work less consistently on stage 25. Uh, let's throw it in. Exact same team. We'll throw it in. So this is where this gets a bit wonky. It's so nowhere near as consistent because we can weak hit. So we get less poisons. Dark Kale can also weak hit. We blow them up. We actually get most of them blown up, which is pretty cool. There we go. We're hitting them. I should actually change the AI just to kill this wave a little bit faster. That could actually save us some time. Um, but yeah, we lay in the poisons. We reset. So yeah, I figured it, I didn't need to change it because um, it resets anyway. But it actually would speed us up if we actually just hit that enemy. We kill that wave just fine right there. 
get through it. Now we're on to the boss. Uh, hopefully, actually, Eleanor will die this time. Eleanor is going to slow us down a lot. Um, and this is where having a worse build on her would help. Unfortunately, I need her for my uh, Fire Knight, so I don't want to put her in a really bad build. See, Dark Hail does weak hit on the decrease attack, but it's okay. It's okay if he weak hits on that. It's just going to let the dragon kill the other ones faster. The reason that he's able to easily do this is that his poisons still land. So like I said, it's not going to be super fast. He will get stunned. But as you can see, the dragon, there's no way the dragon even comes close to killing him. And Dark Hell, there's no way for the dragon to stop his poisons. If he ever does land those extensions, it gets really good. And there we go. It's actually my best time. 108. Dragon 25. Let's do that one more time. Let's actually tweak the setup here. Uh, Dragon 24. Perfect. This was... I threw together this team. My Seer's not geared well enough. Um, but this team would do a similar sort of job. The problem with this... The idea here is that we basically apply a bunch of buffs and Seer one-shots the waves. And it's not dependent on affinity. The problem is that my Kaimar, my Lydia, even my Archmage, they're all too tanky. So they don't die fast enough. The great thing about this team is that <laughs> Gerda, Bogbrew, and Calvalax just flop over dead uh, at a stiff breeze, which is hilarious. So there's no way to fix her sort of stuff. Um, he can do whatever. Dark Hell, let's, let's actually switch this to don't use opener. And let's switch this to don't use. And let's do the same thing. Let's do don't use opener. And don't use. Let's see if this makes a difference. I'm not sure. Gerda's, Gerda's fine. She can do whatever she wants. Uh, yeah, I mean, that looks fine. Let's do it one more time. I'm curious. Uh, but yeah, pretty nuts team, right, guys? Pretty nuts. Um, <laughs> I just thought it was fun. I thought it was really fun. Um, the Gerda uh, pass. Oh, yeah, look. This guy, he just about survives. We get some poisons out there, though. Hopefully, Dark Hail blows some of them up. Boom, burn there. And the really nice thing about Gerda actually in this team right here is in these situations, because it's not consistent, but her turn meter, her passive, I can't believe it, but the passive, the turn meter reduction actually makes it super smooth. It makes it so that these enemies don't get a turn. I think that might have been slightly faster. It's incredible. Her turn meter doing work. Um, I think giving Sniper to Calvalax, I didn't bother going all the way. Uh, I should have gone a little bit further with the Masteries, but going all the way, giving him Sniper would actually help as well. Um, we could potentially turn off Combust from Elinarl, actually. Might speed it up, too. Might give us more poisons more consistently that Dark Hill could extend. We could also try that. Uh, I'll pause it. I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, it's pretty nuts. Here we go. It's going to be about a one-minute run again. We need that Dragon to take one more turn. Now Kale's going to blow him up. 102, slightly faster. Yeah, it's sick. It's sick. That's actually... Um, do I want to do this? Yeah, if we turn off if we turn off her combust on this wave, because she is going to die, and Kale can do his thing. This looks... The rest of it looks good. By the way, we are turning off Gerda's A2 and everything. This is an AoE weaken. We don't want her to do that. Weaken doesn't up the damage of poison. So that's the only thing to watch out for with Gerda. We don't want her to do her A2, just her A3 and her A1. Uh, I guess we could leave her A2 on the waves. It would be fine. Combust. Almost get him. There's her A2. Does almost nothing. Calvalax going to smack. Maybe if we force him to do his A3, might be slightly faster, but it's all good. Come through the wave. Blow him up. But It's been so much fun the last day reworking these teams, switching them up, uh, and seeing what's going to work best. Yeah, this was actually slightly faster this time. We got some good randomness, some good RNG. We apply a bunch of poisons. Elinarl sort of overkills if she tries to blow them up. So it's actually probably better if she gets the HP burn. Dark Hail extends them. Perfect. Unfortunately, he did land the decrease attack, which might slow us down a little bit. But the poisons are... They're building up. Get more poisons right there. Poison sensitivity's back on. Yeah, I guess you got to get lucky and not land decrease attack. Because... Or, or well, I guess the better thing would be to have your Elinarl be squishier. Mine's actually got about 2k defense. There we go. Less than a minute. Boom! Less than one minute. <laughs> Less than one minute. Dragon stage 25. I love it. I love it. Uh, if I show you very quickly, there's no major sets on the others. But just so you know, Elinarl, she's got 2.4k defense, 35k HP. You could really cut down this defense and she would die faster on the boss. And that would be perfect. Um, other than that, this is what sort of the sort of thing that she needs. she needs for this team. Uh, I, I do think if you had uh, someone that could do four poisons, like a Taurus, you could replace Gerda with Taurus potentially, and then have Elinar be slower and just combust the wave. She wouldn't need to smolder. She wouldn't need to take two turns. You can maybe shave a few seconds off there. 
Kalflax works perfect just like this. Kaimar, we're just going to turn off his A2 because his A1 can poison. Again, it would be better if he was squishier and it would be better if he had full crit rate because then he could put out more poisons. Uh, Dark Kale, as you saw, we showed his build already. He's just going to do this. Perfect. And Gerda is just going to do whatever she wants. We're going to turn off Rot Limb on the boss and works great. Same, same exact thing with Ice Golem. Pretty much same exact thing. And uh, that's it. Nice team. Nice team. And the Fire Knight team is not impacted as well. There's no significant gear sets either. But just to let you guys know, my Fire Knight team, it is slightly slower. This is using Dark Kale. We got Tomb Lord in this time. And here we go in LNR. So this is why um, I'm not 100% sure if you made LNR slower, if she could still do this for Fire Knight. So here we go. We see the same sort of thing coming in here. We've got LNR lays in poisons. Uh, uh, Tomb Lord lays in poisons, Dark Hail extends them, and then we explode them. And it is enough to kill those waves. Sometimes, again, if there's a resist, an enemy might slightly survive, and we just finish it off. But here we go. We get through the wave just fine with these exact same builds. My Tomb Lord, he's in his solo dragon build as well. Uh, Tomb Lord's in the solo dragon build. You need Tomb Lord here as well because of everything I said in the Tomb Lord video yesterday. We want that decreased attack on the boss. If there's resists, lots of them, which can happen, uh, it would mean that uh, the boss would take a turn, but he cannot physically kill us with decreased attack on. None of the champions will die and the run keeps going. So even if there's resists on a lore, doesn't matter. Uh, and Tomb Lord also gives us the triple hitter and the decreased speed on his A1 to take down the shield and to try keep that shield down. Uh, and there you go. You can see, again, Dark Kale, Elinaril, the same builds for the other dungeons coming into Fire Knight and doing work. Tomb Lord, he's in our Tomb Lord solo build, coming into this Fire Knight team run as well and doing work. You can't solo this boss because you need lots of turn meter. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. So this run is slightly slower than my fastest. I think my fastest ever was 110. So we've lost maybe 10 seconds. Because so, that was a pretty perfect RNG run. We've lost about 10 seconds re-gearing Tomb Lord, re-gearing Dark Kale, as we've done in these videos. Like Dark Kale without Giant Slayer, he's slower. At Fire Knight, we've lost some damage, but it does not matter, in my opinion. I'm happy to give up 10 seconds for Fire Knight to now have a sub one minute farm for Dragon 25, for Ice Golem 25. It's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. And like I said, if you don't have Calvalax, you can use the champion I don't have. Taurus can absolutely come in. With Taurus, he has a four-turn cooldown, so you will need Kaimar to reset. You need Kaimar uh, with Calvalax. So the reason, uh, you could run Renegade instead of Kaimar as well, but you would need to book Gerda. She'd need to have a three-turn cooldown, or yeah, Taurus needs Kaimar to reset this, but he can put out four poisons. So you can put in Taurus instead uh, on some of those waves. But he, yeah, he either, he needs to go with Kaimar and he can replace Gerda. He can replace Kalvalax, but he needs to go with Kaimar. Uh, with Gerda and with Kalvalax or with two Kalvalax, you can actually run it with a Renegade, but you need to book the Gerda. So she has a three turn cooldown can be reset. Guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the meme team. <laughs> <laughs> One more last look at this beautiful build. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> I got so many comments from people saying, yeah, dude, Calvalax hits really hard. I think it's so funny. So funny then to come in and be like, you all think Calvalax hits real hard? All right, cool. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> this is the build. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Did I show his masteries? These are the masteries. I do want to get him sniper. But other than that, perfect. Guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.